the McLaren 720S claims to be the segment's most complete supercar. More capable, more compliant, and more complete than anything the brand has previously brought us. There's nothing else quite like it. This car is astonishingly, intoxicatingly, deliciously rapid, as you'd expect it would be given that the headline of this 720S is its power figure, 720 PS or 710 BHP in old money. That's courtesy of a fundamentally revised engine that for the first time has been stroked out from 3.8 to 4 litres. A few decades ago, Formula One cars couldn't give you that kind of power. Now true, you do have to work to get everything this new era M840T power plant has to offer. Peak torque of uh, 770 Newton meters isn't delivered until you get to 7,500 RPM. But it's worth it, even if the V8 isn't quite as thundery as you might hope it would be. But all that pales into insignificance once you start to crunch the numbers. Uh, the three second dead rest the 62 miles an hour sprint time that applies to the old 6 50s and this current model's Ferrari 488 GTB arch rival gets reduced by this 720 to just 2.8 seconds. Top speed is 212 miles an hour. And that means that in real terms you're getting hypercar performance for supercar money. It's just as well then that the car comes as standard with carbon ceramic brakes that can stop you from 125 miles an hour in just uh, 117 meters. But then you'll have expected this car to be fast. What's more important to understand as a potential buyer is that it's more agile than its 650 predecessor. Now that's thanks in part to the greater torsional rigidity that comes courtesy of the new Monocage 2 central structure that for the first time sees the upper part of the cabin cell fashioned from carbon fibre rather than from bonded aluminium. And also helping here are the elements that set this 720S apart as a super series McLaren. So first you get special active aerodynamics and they're delivered this time around via an even more enormous hydraulically operated rear wing. Plus there's a sophisticated chassis control system, proactive chassis control 2, which removes the need for anti-roll bars by hydraulically linking the dampers and which constantly analyzes body angle and wheel motion before adjusting the suspension dynamics accordingly. If you want to influence things yourself, a press of this center console active button allows you to use two rotary controllers for handling and powertrain that give you selectable comfort, sport and track options. As well as varying the exhaust note, these affect steering feel, stability control thresholds and gear change timings for the 7-speed dual clutch paddle shift transmission. Now, impressively, one of the things we've liked most about this car is the extent to which it's possible to enjoy it when you're just cruising around. That's aided by excellent all-round visibility from the teardrop-shaped canopy and ride quality that makes long-distance travel more pleasurable than it would be in rivals. Running costs won't be for the faint-hearted though. Now, in theory, you can eke a combined fuel consumption figure of 26.6 .6 miles per gallon out of this car. In practice, well, forget it. And the same goes for the 249 grams per kilometer CO2 rating. Street side presence, every supercar needs that, and this one has it. The aluminium bodywork is shrink-wrapped around a carbon fibre structure to create a lean, sculpted shape that fuses visual drama, state-of-the-art technology, and aerodynamic purity. Designer Rob Melville says it was inspired by the Great White Shark. We should talk about these dihedral doors. After all, if you buy this car, your friends will. They're not the same as the ones McLaren's offered before. Uh, the 80 degree opening angle is lower. That's to help in underground car parks. And they require 155 millimeters less space at the side than is the case with the lesser 570S model. That increases accessibility when you're parked in tight spaces. As you'd expect, the central infotainment screen springs to life on entry, but the most eye-catching element is the folding driver display. And that rotates into its fully open position as you take a seat. The primary hub for driver interaction, though, is that central infotainment screen. It's an 8-inch display that thankfully shares only its portrait format with the quirky iris setup that the brand has previously used and been roundly criticised for by us and by others. A slim leather stitch spur just below this monitor incorporates the main controls for the seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox, while to the right of it lie the rotary controllers of the active dynamics panel that'll be familiar to McLaren regulars. 
Perhaps the main thing, though, that you'll carry away from a seat in here and a short drive is just how relatively easy it is to see out of this thing. Uh, supercar owners who are used to claustrophobic rear cabin pillars or combining bulkheads will look around in amazement. And now, the monocage carbon fibre upper structure with its teardrop canopy has allowed McLaren's designers to specify these strikingly slim roof pillars, while rearward vision is enhanced by transparent glazed seats pillars uh, and the way that the V8 engine has been mounted 145 millimeters lower than it was in the old 650S. Now finally let's finish with a look at boot space which in 720S models is all concentrated under the bonnet. Now yes these are motive vents carbon fibre trimmed in this case are just for show. Now this compartment is 150 litres in size which of course is pretty small but it's probably enough to take a couple of airline sized carry-on bags. On paper, McLaren has always had the measure of its rivals. In reality, though, its offerings have often lacked the emotive drama that characterises the market's most desirable supercars. So it's refreshing to report that the 720S delivers exactly that. Buyers gave the brand a wish list of 650S improvements and the combination of these, along with the latest in mind-warping technology from Woking, has produced a world-class result. It redefines what a supercar should be. Beautiful.